Hi, today's good person to know is Jill Barr. She's former group marketing director for the cooperative group and she gave a talk on leadership. Jill said that because the rate of change has increased exponentially, companies have to be adaptable in order to survive and the only way to do that is to lead differently. She said that organizations have to encourage everyone to bring their creativity to work, that leadership isn't about the position or your rank, but the ability to give direction through flexibility and said you should have the mindset of organic fluidity. Jill said effective leaders are those that see around corners and that most companies have something called dogma which prevents them from doing stuff and that her richest learning has come from working with startups. Now I could go on but Jill says it's so much better than I do. I really hope you enjoy this video. It's particularly relevant for anyone who's leading a project or a team of people I hope it gives you a better understanding and insight as to how you could improve your contribution and the contribution of your team. So I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. Everything is changing exponentially. What that means is organisations need to be very, very adaptable to survive. Organisations are going to have to lead differently in order to respond to that. In the last five years, uh, the cap trade has become more energised by things like Halo, but it's also become a global sector, it's become cheaper, it's become more convenient. Uber now enjoys a, um, a market capitalization of $80 billion and operates in 180 cities. It's just changed beyond recognition. Hyper competition can happen in the cab trade. It can happen to you and your sector too. It's getting harder and harder to avoid knowledge being competed away. Proprietary knowledge is almost becoming an oxymoron. Each of these apps since they've launched have faced ferocious competition. And the only way that they have survived is instead of defending the knowledge that they've already created, to start creating new knowledge. Then I put it to you that leadership will simply have to change. So what might this new leadership look like then? I think the first thing to say is that it isn't that old leadership was bad. At the beginning of the 20th century, the job was to take rural labor and domestic servants and to effectively bring them into the Industrial Revolution. And so a lot of the tools that were invented then are tools we still use today. And the pressures today are really nothing less than to open source leadership. I think that our challenge is to persuade everyone in an organization to bring the gifts of their creativity to work. What we need is for everybody in the organization to recognize that leadership is not a rank. It's actually an authenticity and it's a way of being. I was privileged to work for an amazing leader. His name was David Campbell and somehow he got the myriad of people that were involved in creating something new in retail. Now, actually, David worked for me and was junior to me. But when we were working on stores, I was a follower and he was a leader. I think that that kind of flexibility of role is something that's going to become very, very important in this new leadership. It's an organic fluidity that recognizes that leadership is um, a, a mindset, uh, not a rank. What does that mean for you? Thinking about how we can innovate in what we do, because leaders are judged by what they deliver. But we also know leaders can't do it on their own. And so if uh, they're going to be successful, they have to inspire people. And what's important is how they lead as well as what they do. First one is how to see around corners. I think that um, we live in an incredible age. And I think of the internet as a global um, operating system for innovation. It's completely inspiring. And very often when people come to me and say, well, what can I do to grow as a leader? One of the things I talk about is just read, just read more. The top tip is uh, actually to be found in people's calendars because most people don't make time to do this stuff. And if I could persuade you to hit the pause button and to just spend some time thinking about well, what is coming around the corner in your sector, in your market, what is going to impact your customers, I promise that you will return to the routine invigorated and renewed and with a new sense of prioritization about what's important. You can see that in the change environment that I described, it's going to get more and more important because things are 
effectively there are more and more corners. And even if you can imagine what's coming up next, I think one of the biggest problems is how resistant so many organisations are to change. A, a lethargy and a, an inertia which makes it very difficult to implement stuff. What I call dogma, the unspoken, unwritten, unarticulated assumptions and beliefs that pervade all organisations, which somehow make it easier to duck the issue and, and, and not to do something, not to take a risk. My tip here, getting a group of people together, particularly in the context of a specific challenge or problem, to actually sniff out the dogma and to identify what it is that are the blockages can be very cathartic and can lead to some great ideation. People will often say that uh, it's very difficult to innovate in a large organisation. And in my experience, that's true. So some of the places where I've had my richest learning has been where people depend for their livelihood on being able to innovate faster than the competition. And those kind of places are startups. If you put others first, they will put you first. Organisations are so much stronger when they act in concert. And the reverse is also true. I think one of the things that um, scandalised so many of us about the banking crisis was actually not the sums of money involved, which in any case were not comprehensible, but rather that there were a group of people who acted purely out of self-interest and putting their own priorities before any of their colleagues or the organisation as a whole. So putting others first is a huge way to inspire loyalty. Remember, in this new leadership model, it's incredibly important to get everybody to be creative because we've got to generate more knowledge to keep up with the pace of competition. By watching our backs, they let us take risks, providing that in taking those risks, we're doing it in the context of the brand. The second um, thing is to surround yourself with people who are not like you. To convince people that they would be valued for what they contributed, not for how they looked or how they dressed and that people will be valued for the contribution. And it sounds a really trivial thing, but encouraged uh, much more open thinking about uh, diversity and welcoming different kinds of input. In this new, rapidly changing uh, world, making connections, developing synapses across an organisation is going to be increasingly important. And to give feedback, honest, objective feedback that keeps things on track. The thing about innovation is it's infectious. And once people hear about it, it inspires them to do something too. Leadership really does matter and is going to be a huge driver of competitive advantage uh, over the next decade. Why? Because we're all going to have to adapt to an unprecedented rate of change. There is one final thought that I'd like to leave you with. And it was triggered by a hero of mine, uh, John Sweden Lewis, who set up uh, the uh, John Lewis Partnership. This man is, uh, w was a complete genius and I don't think he's recognised enough. Is that organisation a purpose? And the purpose of the John Lewis Partnership, the happiness of all its members through the provision of sustainable employment. Way back in the kind of 1920s to think about the happiness of people within an organisation as being a goal was an incredibly innovative and far-reaching um, thought. What I really liked about Jill's talk was the bit where she was reporting to a junior member of her team because he was able to lead better than she was on a particular project. And I just thought she was absolutely brilliant for doing that because that's what effective leadership's all about. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.